Misty, what is wrong with you? What are you thinking? How can you do something like this? Oh, shut up, Kate. I haven't done anything wrong. I've done more than enough for Mom over the years to deserve some kind of reward for my trouble. That's all I did. Take what was rightfully mine. We're even now, so I'm never coming home ever again. Misty, Mom is dying. Don't you understand that? The doctors say there's no way she'll last until morning. This is your last chance to come and talk to her in this world. <laughs> no, it's my last chance to take my money and run. Like, I'm not going to wait until after she dies. There's going to be estate taxes, lawyer's fees. It's going to be a complete mess. Think about it this way. I'm saving you a lot of trouble by doing it this way. Saving me trouble? Misty, all you did was steal mom's money. I, I can't believe you, Misty. You're betraying mom, me, and our entire family. I'm not betraying anybody. Like I said, I took care of mom just fine. I don't owe any of you anything. Mom raised both of us all by herself after dad died. She went through so much, worked so hard in order to provide for us. Don't you want to at least tell her thank you for all of that one last time? What am I supposed to be grateful for anyway? That she fed me and clothed me? <laughs> that's nothing special. That's the bare minimum. <laughs> when someone is a kid, that's what they sign up for. Like, it's her entire job. I don't thank the garbage man or the mailman for doing their jobs. Why would I need to thank mom for doing hers? That is the most selfish, heartless, ungrateful thing I've ever heard, Misty. That's a new low, even for you. I'm not selfish. I earned this. I've been visiting mom a bunch since she got sick. I spent more than my fair share of time in that boring old hospital room listening to mom drone on and on about this and that and the other thing, and I am sick of it. Now that she's finally dying, I'm taking my share of mom's money and getting the hell out of town. So this is goodbye. The whole family is here except for you, and we're all in agreement. You are no longer welcome in this family. From now on, no matter what happens, don't expect us to lift a finger to help you. As if I would ever want anything from any of you losers. And besides, the whole family. That's like, what, ten people? What do I care about what ten hicks think of me? Excuse me? Hicks? Yeah, that's what you all are. I'm not wasting one more second of my life in this backwater hick town. You might enjoy living around a bunch of old hillbillies, but I actually have dreams, Kate. Well, good for you. Go on then, follow your dreams, Misty. You don't have to tell me that. What do you think I'm doing right now? I'm taking mom's money and using it to live the life I have always wanted. Don't you think mom would have wanted that for me? I bet she's happy that I'm gonna put her money to such good use. <laughs> Hello there, Kate. My wife doesn't feel much like speaking to you anymore. I want to give you a piece of my mind in her place. How dare you be so cruel to your own sister? I've met some sick and twisted people in my life, but I have never met anyone so demented as to refuse to come to their own sister's wedding. Huh? I'm sorry, who is this and how did you get my number? And what are you yelling at me about all of a sudden? Don't play dumb with me. You know exactly what day this is. I won't let you pretend otherwise. Right. Look, I I'm pretty sure that you have the wrong number. Whoever you're angry at right now, I can assure you, it isn't me. You're not getting out of this that easily. You know what you did. You betrayed your own sister in the worst way imaginable. I don't have a sister. What? How can I betray a sister that I don't have? I'm not the person you're looking for. Try dialing the number again. You must have hit a wrong digit somewhere in there. But, no, there's no way this is the wrong number. You're Kate, right? Missy's older sister? Oh, I, um, well, I guess you don't have the wrong number after all. Wait, you said Misty is your wife? You're Misty's husband? I'm glad you finally remembered. Our wedding is today, but you are nowhere to be found. In fact, no one from your family has come. Not one single person. I can't imagine how heartbroken Misty must be right now. Hold on. Misty told you that I was her older sister? Yeah, and why wouldn't she? You are her sister, aren't you? I bet you think you're such hot stuff just because you're running your own company. That's what this is, isn't it? 
You think you're too good to attend your own sister's wedding? You new money types are all alike. Thinking you're the hottest thing ever just because you go viral once or twice. But let me tell you something. You will never be in the same league as an established, storied firm such as my family's. What? I was looking forward to this day for so long. I was hoping I'd finally get the chance to meet my wife's family. But I looked in the chapel right now, and the bright side of the aisle is completely empty. Do you have any idea how much you humiliated me? Our family is no longer associating with Misty. She's not welcome in this family ever again. What? None of us, myself included, knew that Misty was getting married today. We haven't even heard a single word from her in over five years. I have no idea how you got the impression that her entire family decided to cancel on her the day of her wedding, but that's not what's going on. So I'd appreciate it if you would stop sending me all these angry texts. Misty told me everything. You can't lie to me. I know that all of you turned your backs on Misty in her time of need and cut off contact with her. But you couldn't even give up your bizarre, unjustifiable vendetta against her for one single day? The happiest day in her life? Wait, what are you talking about? Stop lying to me! You know exactly what I'm talking about. All the way through high school, Misty was always showing you up. She was prettier than you, got better grades than you, and had more friends than you, and you couldn't control your jealousy. So you told a lie after lie about Misty to your family until she had no choice but to leave her home behind. You even stole the money she would made working her part-time job. Wow, there was so much untrue information in there that I don't even know where to start. It's clear that I need to start from the beginning and tell you what really happened five years ago. This is going to be a long story, so it'll probably take me a while to type it all out. First things first, though, there's something else I need to do. I'll be right back. Hey, where are you going? Well, hello, Misty. I just received a long series of very angry texts from someone claiming to be your new husband. Would you mind explaining that to me? Is this guy really your husband? What? Joseph has been texting you? What is that moron thinking? I told him that something came up and you guys had to cancel. We didn't cancel on you. We were never coming in the first place. We didn't even know you were getting married. Why didn't you tell him the truth? We cut off ties with you five years ago. You were the one who took mom's money and ran. This doesn't concern you at all, so stay the hell out of my life. Just shut your mouth and ignore any more messages from Joseph. Got it? It didn't concern me right up until the point that you dragged me into it. You've been name dropping the company that I started to impress the people in your new life, haven't you? Uh, no. I'm not sure about all the details, but Joseph told me that his family owns some famous company. It's obvious that you're pretending to be involved with my company in order to impress his parents and get them to support your marriage. That would explain why you didn't tell him that you willingly walked away from this family. And why you had to lie and say that we were planning to come to the wedding but cancelled on you at the last minute. <laughs> get over yourself, Kate. You think I need to use your third-rate company to impress my fiancé's family? Please. Well, at the very least, I know that you were aware of my company's existence. Why, though? The last time we spoke, you told me you didn't want anything to do with us anymore. What? Do you think I've been stalking you guys online or something? Your company was in the news a while back, that's all. And I don't care in the slightest about anything you do, including your company. Ah, I see. So you saw that interview I did with the local news station. Okay, that makes sense. I'll go ahead and explain everything to Joseph then. Wait, what? What are you going to explain to him? I'm just going to tell him what you just told me. That we've cut off all family ties and that you have absolutely nothing to do with my company. Huh? You don't need to do that. But you just told me that you didn't need to use my third-rate company to impress your fiancé and his family. If that's true, I don't see what the problem would be with me telling him as much. It's not really a problem, it's just... Uh, he's super busy right now. I mean, my god, Kate, today is our wedding! Are you really gonna bother Joseph for that nonsense on the day of our wedding? Do you have no common decency? Common decency? 
I don't want to hear anything about decency from you, Misty. Do I need to remind you that you stole most of Mom's money while she was lying on her deathbed and ran away? Oh, come on, are you still going on about that? I told you I was saving you all a bunch of time and trouble. And it's not like she was going to use it herself while she was literally laying there dying in the hospital. <laughs> so yeah, going back to common decency, that quip right there at the end was all the proof I need to show that you have none. Leave me alone, Kate. I don't want to talk to you anymore. The feeling is mutual. Misty, are you there? We need to talk. A few minutes ago, your sister sent the same message to a bunch of my family members. She had quite a story to tell. Is any of that true? That little brat. I can't believe she would do this to me. She's lying, Joseph. None of it is true. She's just bullying me. Wow. Your family really hasn't given up on their harassment campaign against you, huh? I mean, you told me they hated you. But I can't imagine how much they've had to hate you to try and interfere with your wedding. I know, right? They're awful. Every single person in that family is the worst. Why did I have to be born into such a terrible family? I don't deserve to be treated like this. Can you do something about them, Joseph? Like, can you get your lawyers to sue them for slander? I suppose it might be possible. But first, there's something I need to ask you. Your sister told us a crazy story about how you stole a bunch of money from your mom while she was on her deathbed and skipped town. She told you that? Oh, that is a complete lie. I'll tell you what really happened. You see, Kate had been scheming for some time to try and keep me from getting any of Mom's inheritance when she died. I only realized that on the day Mom died, so I had no other choice. It was either act then or lose everything. I felt terrible about it, but I only did what I had to do to protect myself. Didn't I tell you about that this morning? Yeah. Yeah, you did. You had never mentioned that to me before, so I was really shocked. I got so angry that I went and shot off a bunch of texts to your sister about it. That leaves me with another question. If all that was true, why did you offer to broker a deal between your sister's company and mine? Huh? Why would you want to help out the sister who hates you so much? I've been wondering about that since this morning, actually. If your family unceremoniously disowned you and has been harassing you ever since... Why would you want to do something so profitable for them? Um, uh, is that what I said? I, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> nah, me and Kate have always been besties. Sure, the rest of my family may have turned their backs on me, but Kate has always been super supportive of me. Then why didn't she come to the wedding? I'll bet she just has a stomach ache or something. Misty, don't you think this has gone far enough? How big of an idiot do you think I am? What do you mean? Sure, I can be impulsive at times and jump into things without too much thought. I tend to be more of a big picture type of guy who doesn't sweat the minor details. That's common for guys running massive operations like me. But I'm not stupid enough to believe the lies you're trying to sell me right now. Joseph, you mean you don't trust me? You think I'm lying to you? I want to trust you, Misty. Really, I do. But when I look at this whole situation objectively... The only rational conclusion I can come to is that you're lying. And this isn't just me. My whole family feels the same way. Joseph, what are you saying? I'm saying that I think it's best if we put this wedding on hold for now. I don't want to believe that you're the type of person who would steal from her own dying mother. But I'm afraid I can't say I do until I find out exactly what the truth is. Well, wait, Joseph, you can't be serious. How could you possibly believe them? You know I'm not the kind of person who'd do that. I told you, Misty. The whole family's on the same page. Given everything we know, the only conclusion that we can make at this point is that you're lying. And that was before you tried to do the complete rewrite of the story you told me about your sister. But all you have is her word against mine. Are you really going to break off our engagement over what she told you? After all we've been through together? It's not just her word against yours. She has receipts. What? What evidence? The text conversation you two had on the night your mother died. I'm shocked, Misty. Utterly shocked. What you did is one of the worst things you could possibly do to your mother. 
God damn it, she showed you the text? Why didn't you say so sooner? I wanted to give you a chance to come clean, but you failed. It's over, Misty. I wish things could have worked out between us. I really enjoyed all the time that we shared together. I was looking forward to spending the rest of my life with you, building a family with you. But we still can, Joseph, can't we? Uh, somehow? You know what? I still love you, Misty. I need you in my life. My family will never accept our relationship now. We'll just have to run away together. We can get eloped and move far away where they'll never find us. Huh? It's the only way for us to be together. What do you say, Misty? Do you want to embark on the biggest adventure of our lives? But, Joseph, what about your company? You're going to be CEO someday, right? What's going to happen with all of that if we run away together? I don't care about any of that. All I need is you. A CEO doesn't really do that much anyway. Anyone can be a CEO. I would give up that monotonous life in a heartbeat if it meant being together with the woman I love. Joseph, are you serious about this? You bet I am. Nothing that happened in your past matters to me. I love the person you are today. Come on, Misty. Let's ditch this stuffy wedding chapel. Go home, pack our bags, and buy the first bus tickets out of town. Well, I'm so very moved that you would say that to me. But I'm going to have to turn you down. Sorry. What? What do you mean, Misty? Don't you want to marry me? Isn't that what you want? Well, yeah, I, I do want to marry you, but uh, running away, uh, that's a bit too much for me. I like this city. There's so much to do around here, so many great places to shop. I don't want to leave that behind. Oh, all right then. We'll stay in town. I'll tell my parents I'm quitting the company and we can start a new life together right here. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not really a big fan of that either. I'd be too concerned about my future to marry a man who's unemployed. You understand, right? Misty, don't tell me. Did you only want to marry me because of my wealth and status? No, that's not it at all. All I'm saying is... Well, let's find a way to do this where you don't have to quit your company, okay? I love you so much, Joseph, and I'd love you a lot more if you became the CEO of your family's gigantic multinational corporation. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? You were actually taking me seriously just now? I can't believe you. Wait, Joseph, what's going on? I knew all along you were only after my money and would tell whatever lie you had to in order to get your hands on it. I wanted to see how low you would go is all. <laughs> you were tricking me? Yeah, and you took the bait. Hook, line, and sinker. I don't need a gold digger like you in my life. Screw you, Misty. We're through. No, Joseph, wait. Come on. This isn't fair. I hope you're happy with yourself, Kate. My whole life is in shambles now, thanks to you. I was about to be the pampered wife of the most eligible bachelor in this entire city. It's no one's fault but your own. How is it my fault when you were the one who came around injecting yourself into my personal matters? You were the one who was name-dropping my company while you were lying to impress your prospective in-laws. It's not like I wanted to get involved in your wedding. You dragged me into it. Speaking of your wedding, I presume it's going to be called off? Yeah, thanks to you. My wedding is canceled, my fiancé broke up with me, and every single plan I had for the future is up in smoke, and it's all your fault. What am I going to do now, huh? I don't know about you, but I'm going to sit back and enjoy the show. I heard you're up to your eyeballs in debt, too. Hey, how did you know that? Because I know you better than you know yourself. You wasted all of mom's money away on booze and gambling, and now you're taking out loans to pay back the loans you took out to pay back more loans. <laughs> None of that is true. Is that so? Then why did you have to use my company to try and climb the social ladder? No reason. I just needed to name drop some company and thought yours would be as good as any other. Uh-huh, right. Well, then I'll tell you what. I'm in a generous mood. If you give me an honest apology right now... I'll lend you some money. Really? 
apologize for robbing mom while she was on her deathbed, using my company's name to marry a rich guy, and all the other atrocious things you've done. If you can give me a convincing enough apology, then sure, I'll throw you a bone. I thought so. Well, then I tried to offer you a chance to face up to what you've done and start to redeem yourself. But I guess you're not interested. Okay, I'm sorry. For what? Be specific. I'm sorry for taking mom's money when she was dying. I'm sorry for name dropping your company to impress Joseph's family. I'm sorry for lying to Joseph about the circumstances behind me running away from home. I'm sorry for all of that. Please forgive me. I'll do whatever I can to make things right with you and the family. Hmm, I don't know. Is that how you really feel? You really want to make things right with me and the rest of the family? Yes, I mean it. So please forgive me and please lend me some money. All right, I'll spot you $10,000. Really? Wow, that would really help me out. Thank you so much. So you can go ahead and pay me back the amount you took from mom minus that 10000 Wait, huh? Oh, and another thing. I know you're probably going to be on the hook for paying the cancellation fees for the wedding today, but I'm afraid you'll have to do something about that yourself. Hey, hang on. What are you doing? You said you were sorry for what you did, right? And that you want to do whatever it takes to make things right with us? If that's true, then the first thing you'll need to do is repay us for the money that you stole from mom on the night she died. I promised I'd loan you $10,000, so you can leave that amount out for now. But don't forget that it's just a loan, so you will be paying me back for that $10,000 eventually. I don't believe this! First Joseph lied to me about wanting to run away with me, now you're lying to me about loaning me money? I haven't told you any lies. Well... Okay, maybe you're right about that, but I still don't agree to those terms. Oh, okay, then you can forget about me loaning you the 10000 I'll still be coming after you for the money you stole from Mom, though. If you'd like, I can have my lawyers take you to court and make it official. That's not fair, though. Mom was going to give me some money, right? So I would have been entitled to at least part of what I took. I know that you'd like to think that, but sadly, you're wrong. Mom took you out of her will. No! Yes, and just like all the other disasters that have come your way lately, that's your fault too. It's true that mom was going to give you half of her estate like normal. However, that was before you betrayed her on the night she died. When she found out that you had stolen her money and ran off, she immediately called her lawyer to get her will altered. What? You mean she was on her deathbed, but she still had the presence of mind to call her lawyer? Have you ever seen someone die, Misty? It's not like it looks in movies. People can drift in and out of consciousness, and some people even have moments of incredible clarity right before the end. So, no, you had no right to receive any of the money you took. You know what that makes you? A thief. I had no idea. And you kept all of that a secret from me for five whole years? You told us you were sick and tired of dealing with us backwater hicks and said you were never coming home. I didn't even know where to find you. What good would it do me to tell you about what happened with mom's will? Okay, so I messed up big time. I realized that and I'm really, really sorry. So I'm begging you, Kate, won't you please help me out? Despite everything that's happened, you're still my sister, right? Sister? I have no sister. After that, the wedding was officially called off. Joseph's family sued her for the full cost of the wedding, as well as their transportation and lodging costs. Meanwhile, my family sued her for the money that she stole from Mom. As a result, Misty fell even deeper into debt than she already was. She took out a loan for the full amount of both lawsuits and paid us in one lump sum. For whatever reason, she even included the $10,000 that I told her I'd give her a break on. Oh well, this still doesn't mean I'm going to forgive her. I have no interest in ever rekindling our sibling relationship. Left penniless and alone, Misty's first thought was to try and beg her former fiancé Joseph for forgiveness and ask for his help. However, it seems like he won't be getting over the embarrassment she caused him with her lies anytime soon. He kicked her right back onto the curb, and I haven't heard anything from her since. <laughs>